Hi, I'm Norm Abram, and this is the new Yankee Workshop, where today I'll be building this very useful tool, a woodworker's bench. Not long ago, we took a visit to the Hancock Shaker Village, where we saw its ancestor. I'll show you that next. The new Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Well, it must have been quite a challenge to figure out behind which door was the right screw or nail that you needed. But not so over here, where all the planes were lined up. Beautiful wooden planes that the Shakers would buy at the local general store. And they always bought the latest tools and the best that money could buy. Now this plane right here puts a little quarter round on. So by making several passes on the edge of a piece of wood, we could end up with a nice bead like this. But the real joy is working on a nice bench. Now this one was probably built right here with oak, maple, and pine. An additional feature that was added was a vise to hold wood in place for edge joining. And here, a second pair of hands to hold up the wood so it wouldn't fall down, and it was adjustable. On such a bench, you could build beautiful pieces of furniture, like this tailor's counter. But let's face it, not everybody has room in their workshop, their home workshop, for a three foot by 12 foot workbench. But maybe I can incorporate some of the ideas I've seen here today into a bench that's affordable and will fit in your shop. Here in our workshop, the bench shows a lot of use, and for good reason. I use it every day for a variety of tasks. This one happens to be a West German import built out of red beech which is a real hard material, and it's going to take that abuse that I give it every day. Plus, it's a very stable material, and this top is going to stay nice and flat for many years to come. But the most important feature of any woodworker's bench is the ability to clamp down pieces of wood. This one uses metal dogs with springs so they can be held in all these different clamping slots, which gives me a variety of clamping positions. And on the other end, there's a vise with another dog. So that when I want to work on a piece of wood, I can set it in place, clamp it down. And I know that it's solidly held in place so that I can do routing, sanding, and I can even glue up some of the stock that I need for different projects. Another feature that I really like about this workbench is that it has a tool storage area. And it's recessed so that the tools stay out of the way, yet they're read readily available for me to use. That's all the nice features about this workbench. The bad news is that in reality, this bench today retails for over $700. Now here's a version of the bench that I think the Shakers would accept because it's made of readily available materials that are reasonable to buy. Two by fours, some plywood, oak along the edges, with hardboard on the top to take all the abuse the bench is going to get. And it incorporates the same features, bench dogs, except this time made out of oak. And over on this end of the bench, a vise, an oak block for the other dog. And the only piece of hardware that I had to buy, this European bench screw, which was about $40. Also in the back of the bench, I've built in that recessed tool storage. So for about $120, we've got a bench that's going to last for generations. Now to get started on this, the first thing I want to do is make the legs. And I've dadoed out the material here, which will hold the bench frame. And then down at the bottom, there's a, another dado for this tool storage shelf. And I do those over here on my radial arm. I've set the radial arm up with a dado cutting blade. And this is two blades set at an angle. So you can see as it turns, they're close together and then they're spread apart. And that'll allow me to plow out about three quarters of an inch of material at a time. Okay, now let's turn it over and dado out for the shelf. Okay, that's our four legs. 
And the next thing I want to do is make a couple of feet, this piece right here. That helps stabilize the bench. And I need to make a half inch deep dado so that my leg can fit into that like that. So back to the radial arm. Okay, that takes care of the two feet, but I want to knock off this sharp edge by chamfering it so I won't stub my toe as I walk around the bench. And I'll do that right here on the miter box, set at a 45 degree angle. But while I have the dado head set up in the radial arm, I want to make this end piece for my tool storage area. And I want to make a rabbit joint in that, which is like this. And that just gives me a real strong connection. Now with the hardboard removed, and now the plywood, I can give you a closer look at the anatomy of our workbench frame. And as you can see, it's just two by fours, starting with this long one along the back here, which is just square cuts on each end. And then a dado right here in the part way over to accept this piece, which fits in like that, which has a dado here for the side of the vise, like this, and a dado right here for the bench dog assembly. And then there's one more piece down on this end, which is this piece, dadoed to accept the vice side and rabbited for the back of the bench. All those pieces fit in together like that. And then on this end, another rabbited piece for the back edge and a larger cut here for the bench dog assembly, which we have here. Now I've laid it out and it also has to be dadoed, but before that we do that, let's take a look at our original workbench over here. You can see when you pop up these bench dogs and put a square against them that they're set at an angle. And that's done deliberately because as you apply pressure in clamping a piece of wood in, these start to move to a vertical position. And if they were able to go beyond vertical, the work would just pop out. So we need that little extra angle on there. Now I'll do that over on the radial arm, which I've already changed the setup. And you can see I've swung it over to four degrees. And I've set the depth so I remove just a little more than three-eighths of an inch of material. And you can clearly see that these are all cut on an angle. Okay, that's one side of my bench assembly. Now to do the other side, I'm going to have to swing my radial arm four degrees on the other side of zero to make these cuts. The next operation that I have to do is to put a groove in this two by four, which is the back member of the bench. And it's grooved out so that we can put this plywood tool storage shelf into the groove. It's about a quarter inch deep and three quarters of an inch wide. And I've set the radial arm up to do just that. Now notice down here underneath where the shelf is, it's been recessed into the 2 by 4 so I need to cut a rabbit. And that is done so I don't see the edge grain of the plywood. And it also makes a much stronger shelf. And I've set up the radial arm to do that operation, and that's next. ready for some assembly. And the first thing I'm going to do is put these two 2x4s two together that hold the bench dog. So a little glue 
and some Phillips head screws, and that'll be all made. Now with a little glue and some screws, for which I've already pre-drilled and countersunk so that I won't split my pieces, I'm ready to continue assembling the top. And now for the legs, a little more of the same, some glue and some screws to hold them in place. But one additional step before I drive all the screws in, I want to just check these legs to make sure they're nice and square, like that with a big frame and square, and that'll do the job. Now I'm ready to put in the side supports for the tool shelf, a little bit of glue, and they get set in our dados and they stick over about a half an inch beyond the leg and fastened with some more screws. Okay, and now for the end support for the shelf. Now the feet are installed just like the rest of the assembly with glue and screws, but note I'm putting these pads on. And what they do is they help to make up for any irregularities there might be in the floor. Okay, now here I have a piece of three-quarter inch plywood and a piece of quarter inch hardboard, which are for the top of the bench. And I need to cut a slot in both of those pieces for this bench dog assembly here. So I've laid it out three quarters of an inch wide and about three foot six long. And I'm going to take the piece of hardboard and screw it to the plywood so that I can cut through both materials at one time. I suppose there are many ways to cut this slot, but I like to use the table saw. And by using the fence as a guide and slowly plunging the piece over the blade, I can cut out my slot. OK, now I'll just readjust my fence over another 3 quarters of an inch and make the other cut. Oh, my electric jigsaw sure makes quick work of finishing up that slot. Now the top is fastened to the frame by using inch and a half screws about six inches on center all the way around the perimeter. Well, let's take another look at our completed bench. You'll notice that I've had to cut out part of the top for the vice mechanism. So I've gone over here and done the layout on the hardboard, and I'm going to use my circular saw to take out that material. Hopefully I've laid it out right so I won't cut out any of my 2 by 4 below or hit any of those screws. And now I'll just finish those cuts with my jigsaw. Well, finally, I'm ready to start in with the oak banding. And the end pieces of the table are just square cuts, and they fit in to rabbited front and back pieces like this. Now, I've laid out the rabbit for the front piece, and I'll cut that over here on the table saw using the dado head and the T-square. Now this back piece of oak, as well as the two end pieces, also need a dado to hold this piece of plywood at the bottom of the tool storage area. 
much like the one that was in the two by four. And I'll do that over on the table saw. The last two dados that I made are on these pieces. This one, which fits on the inside of the vice area, and the dado is for this piece of oak, which acts as a runner for the vice block right here. You can see the runner in there. And I also needed a dado in the front piece for the other side of the runner. And you see that this block rides back and forth on those two pieces of oak. In fact, we're ready to start building that block. Now, the vice block is made from two pieces of inch and a half oak. And I need a square hole through there for the bench dogs. I've already cut one, but on this other half, you can see the layout lines, again, at four degrees, just like they were on the two by fours earlier. Except this time, I'm going to do it on the table saw with my dado head and the T-square. And I've put an extension on the T-square to make it safer to handle these small pieces of wood. Watch. Now, the last groove that I have to make is in the side of each piece, and that'll provide a track for the runner to go in. A little bit of glue here, and then we'll be ready to screw it together. And boy, you know, on this oak, it's critical to cut pilot holes. It's such a hard wood. With the runner glued and screwed from the back side, I'm ready to set this piece in place and fasten it to the frame with some screws. Okay, with the runner installed in my front piece of band, I'm ready to set that in place. I'm only going to temporarily fasten this particular piece because I'm going to have to take it out later to put the bench vise in. So a couple screws in each end. And now I can put the side pieces on. And they just fit right in that rabbit. Okay. Now this two inch band goes along the back of the top, and that just dresses it up where it goes into that tool storage shelf. Now I'm ready for the plywood shelf for that tool area, and that fits right into all those dados that I've made. Like that, and then the back piece of oak fits over the outside. And we'll screw that together at each of the corners. Now with my front piece removed, I'm ready to drill a hole through the 2x4 in oak for my bench screw. And I'll do that with an inch and 3 8 bit, starting from this side and finishing it from the other side. The 
collar for the bench screw gets attached to the wooden block with some big screws. The collar fits over the end of the bench screw like this. And then the nut of the bench screw right here is fastened with four carriage bolts. OK, that takes care of the carriage bolts. Now I can set this front piece back in place and fasten it down. And the end is in sight. Now the bench dogs from the European bench are made out of metal. And I can't really make those here in the shop, but I can sure make them out of wood. And what I've done is taken a piece of oak and cut it out to the approximate shape and then installed an eighth inch piece of oak, which acts like a spring to hold it in place. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut these pieces on the bandsaw. Now I'm ready to attach these little eighth inch pieces to act as springs. But first I'm going to have to drill a pilot hole for the screws, especially in this hard oak. Now just a couple small screws. Now those should work great. Well, let's try our bench dogs. One will go in the various slots along the table, depending on the size of the piece of wood that I'm going to be clamping in here. And let's put it here for now. And the other one will go in the vise, which is the movable part of the system. Now, the tendency of these is that as a piece is clamped, this will push back. So to prevent that, I've cut some additional hardwood blocks at a four degree angle. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom and put it behind the bench dog, making sure that it's tight up against it. And I'll fasten it in place with a couple of screws. And I'll put one behind each location all the way down the line. <laughs> Next thing I have to do is make a handle for this bench screw. And to do that, I'm going to use some one inch doll stock with these knobs on each end. In fact, these are just knobs I bought at the woodworking store, and a piece of 3 8 inch dowel to connect the knob to the 1 inch stock. The first thing I'm going to do is drill the 3 8 holes in each end of the 1 inch stock. One knob set in place. I'll slide it through the bench screw. Put a little more glue on the little 3 8 doll. Slip the other knob over the end. And there we have our bench handle. Oh, now here's something I almost forgot to do. Where the bench dogs go into the sliding block, I need to recess them out so that this will go all the way down. Otherwise, whenever I want to have the bench as a perfectly flat surface, they're going to be in the way. So I'll do that by using a brad point bit and a chisel to remove the rest of the material. That's going to work fine. Now, any of these sharp edges along the top of the workbench, I think I'll ease those using a chamfering bit mounted in my router. Wow, 
Well, with the final screw in place to hold the bottom shelf in, this bench is ready to go to work. Boy, that works pretty good. You know, a woodworker's bench is an essential part of my workshop. And I hope that with the help of this video and the measure drawing, that you'll be able to build one for yourself. Now, here's some more information on other new Yankee projects that you can build right in your own home workshop. Here's a workbench, a useful item in any shop. This is a drop leaf table, a classic addition to any home. Here is a blanket chest, a wonderful heirloom piece to build and have. The bedside table is shaker inspired and a popular piece. Take a look at the bathroom vanity. Its design draws on the dry sinks of the past. This handsome trestle table is patterned after one found on the island of Nantucket. The bookcase, a revival of an old beauty found at Sturbridge Village. The chest of drawers is a traditional piece based on a shaker design. Look at the candle stand with its beautifully turned center column and gently curving legs. Here is a hutch, an indispensable item in any kitchen or dining room. My writing desk is made of maple with a smooth writing surface and lots of useful storage compartments. The corner cupboard makes good use of those often unused areas in your home. Here's a medicine cabinet made from oak and featuring fox joints. And there it is, the new Yankee collection. Norm Abram is the author of the book, The New Yankee Workshop, which is available in bookstores and libraries nationwide.